Hello, my name is Trey Harding and I'm the Identity SE for the Southeast. Today we're going to walk through how to configure workflows for CyberArk Identity. Right now we're inside of the admin portal and in order to start configuration, we'll go down to web apps under apps. I'll click web apps and now we can see all the different applications that we can configure. Today we're going to focus on the company Twitter account that's currently accessible for the marketing team but we will configure a workflow in order to allow other users to request access. Click company Twitter. And right now we're focused on workflow. If I click workflow, what we want to do is click the checkbox for enable workflow for this application. Click the checkbox. And right now you see that I'm pre-populated as an approver because I'm logged in as an admin. But for demonstration purposes, I'll remove myself and right now we'll click add to add an approver. There are multiple different approver types we can have. We can have a specified user role like we just saw, or we can do it via the requesters manager. We click requesters manager. We see that we have some actions that are specified if a user has no manager. Those options are automatically approve, automatically deny, or we can route to another user or role. Just to show how route to user or role works, we'll click route to user or role. We'll click add. And right now you can search for a user or role that will be the approver in the event that a user does not have a manager in the system. We'll use me as an example. I'll click my name. Click add. And now this is what it will look like for a user that does not have a manager. But for demonstration purposes, I'll remove this and we'll go back to what we saw initially and we'll specify myself as the approver. So I'll click specified user role. I'll click add. I'll type in my username again. Click the checkbox. I'll click add. Now I can click save. And now the admin side of things are done and this is configured for workflow. Click minimize and right now we'll log in as a test user. And on the right is my phone to show you what the multi-factor challenge looks like within the adaptive app. Type in the username for the user. Enter in their password. And we have a bunch of authentication methods here, whether I want to use mobile authenticator through the adaptive app, an OTP client, email, text message, or phone. Click mobile authenticator. I'll click send me a push. I now receive that push notification. I'll click notification. And now I'll click approve. And it's prompted me for a touch ID for an extra layer of security. Now my request is approved. This is the user portal that shows all the different apps that I have access to. But for this example, we want to request access to the corporate Twitter account that currently only the marketing team has access to. So we'll click add apps. We'll search for Twitter. And now we can see that the company Twitter is requestable. We'll click request. And now you're prompted to give a reason if you wanted to. So I'll say because I need access to post on the company's behalf. We have some assignment types here, both permanent and window. Permanent means that I'll get permanent access to this application. Maybe I need access to this, you know, forever. Or we could have a more windowed and least privileged approach. And maybe I just want a windowed assignment type. So maybe I only need access to this application for one month. So we'll specify that my start date is today. And maybe we'll request access to this application up until August 13th of next month. Specify that and I'll click submit. And now the request is submitted. So we'll close out of here. And if the user goes to request, we can now see that this request is pending. So, if I, so me as the approver, if I jump to my email, I now see that I have a new app access request. If I click this email, I can either view the request here and it will route me to the admin portal so that this, is, this helps in situations where the user does not always need to go to the portal to approve any request. They can get it right into their email. But in this case, we already have a session open in the admin portal. So we'll jump back to the admin portal. And if I click requests under core services, we can now see the request that was just submitted by the user. In this case, I'll click the request. I can look at all the different request information, such as the description, 
the, the window time that we specified, who the requester was, and their reasoning, as well as any other approvers that, will, that could come after me. In this scenario, we'll press approve. And now we can see that this user asked for window request again, but we could also specify that this user could actually get permanent. Maybe I've determined that this user might move over to my team, maybe they need more permanent access in the way that a marketing employee would. So we'll click submit. And now you can see under request, it says that it's approved. We jump back to the other browser and we'll go to the email of the user. You can now see that they were sent an email specifying that the app request was approved. So now they can click to see the new app in the user portal from this link right here. But we also have a, a browser session already open. So we'll jump over to applications. And now you can see that the company Twitter is an option for this user. So that has walked you through what, it, what a workflow looks like in order for a user that didn't have access to it once now has access to it via the approval workflow. In order to get some auditing around this, we also can go and look at some reports. So if under core services, if we press reports, we can go and look at a built-in report that'll show us all the different application requests and who approved them. So if we click application requests, we can specify a time range that we want to search for application requests within. So right now we'll search for um, a range that starts you know, 13 hours ago and the date range ends seven hours from now. Click OK. You can look at all of the different access application requests that have happened in that time frame. And within that, you can look at who the requester was, you can look at who the appro approver was, and you can look at the application that they asked for request for. And within actions, you can export this report so that it can be readable and you can send it to any other groups that may need access to this report. That concludes my presentation on workflows within CyberArk Identity.